Hey guys, so in our application right now, when we create a message, I am a message, we don't see anything pop up in our message pane right here. And the message is created, we just have to refresh to see it because we're not basically looking for updates. So we're going to be turning this into a real-time application using GraphQL subscriptions. We already set up the infrastructure on our server and our front end to be able to handle this. So now we just need to implement implement it with subscriptions. And the thing that we want to do is a little bit special because what we want to do is I have multiple channels, multiple teams here. So you don't want to be getting messages from other teams and other channels. So we need to filter um, who's seeing what. So that's what we're going to be doing. There is a with filter function we're going to be using from GraphQL subscriptions that uh, allows us to filter who we're, who we're like uh, sending events to. And so if I'm part of this general channel, I only get general, chan uh, general channel events. All right, let's take a look at uh, the back end and start working on this. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a subscriptions type. So subscription, it's, it's kind of like a query or a mutation type. And here I'm gonna say new channel message. And uh, we're going to need to take in a parameter here, so channel ID, and that's going to be an int. So the channel ID uh, parameter right here is going to tell us how we know which channel to send events for. And then we're going to return a message. Now in our resolvers over here, we're going to be filtering using this example. So we're going to copy this. and bring it over here. So I'm gonna put it up here at the top and in our index we have this little pub sub guy. We're gonna be using him over here in our resolver. So I'm just gonna move him over, save my index page. All right, and we're also going to get with filter. Now pub sub we need to create an instance of, so I'm gonna say const pub sub is equal to new pub sub and we need to capitalize that. Now we use this pub sub in our resolvers. Now if I needed to use pub sub across multiple resolvers, I would put this in a different file and export it, but this is okay for now. Now there can be lots of different subscriptions in your application and for pub sub to differentiate between them, you have to create a, what's called an event name basically. So that this is called comment added. We're going to create constant up here for it. So I'm going to call this new channel message. And it's going to be new channel message is this string. And so how with filter works is we say um, the event we want to emit. So or what we want to listen for. So the, the event we're going to listen for is whenever the pub sub publishes a new channel message. And whenever it publishes a new channel message, what we want to do is we want to check whether um, we're in the channel of that message that was just created. So the way we're going to do that is variables. This object here is uh, the arguments. You could, we could call this args since that's what we've been using all um, other places. So that's this thing. So for us, our only argument is channel ID. And if we wanted to, we could actually just expand this but we'll just say args.channelid. And then our payload, we're gonna compare this against the payload's channel ID. Now the payload, this is the payload that's gonna be sent to our client, and this is what happens when the PubSub publishes. And this will make more sense what our payload is in a second. So now we want to publish a new channel message every time we create a message. So in our create message here, after we create a message, so const message is equal to this, we are going to say pub sub dot publish. Now notice how it has a trigger name, which is the event. Ours is new channel message, and then a payload, which is an object. And you wanna say new channel message. The name of this, um, property needs to match um, the name we put over here. So we call it new channel message. So that should match here. 
and we also it should match here as well. So new channel message. And then here is our message. So the message that we have is message and we have to do dot data values. The reason for that is this is a SQLize object and we need to get the data values from it. Okay, so this payload object is sent to our pub sub over here and it says, hey, this listener, does he want to get this event that was just published? And we're going to check the payload's channel ID, which we currently are not passing in. So let's pass that in. Channel ID is equal to args.channel ID. So this create message, if we look back at our schema, create message is passed a channel ID, which we're using right here to know what we're publishing. Okay, so we use this to figure out what channel you're in, and this is what we're sending to our client so they can add a message to their, uh, to the, so we can see the message live, and we don't have to wait. So that is our back end, and let's set up the front end now. So on the front end side, we first need to call that subscription. So if we go to localhost 8081, we can actually type this subscription out. Subscription, and we have one variable, channel ID, which is an int. And then we're gonna say new channel message, and we're just gonna pass in our channel ID. Now we wanna grab the same fields over here. So I'm going to paste them. Oh, I didn't copy them. So we want to grab the same fields that we're getting in our query here. So that way we can update correctly. So grab that, copy it. And then we're actually going to be using that in a second. First, we have to call a subscribe to more function. So, oh, let's refresh. So in our React application, it, this the component we're working with here is called message container. Now if I come over to message container, you'll notice we have this data prop, which we know we get from GraphQL. We have this subscribe to more function that we want to call. And what that allows us to do is we can pass a document to it right here. And this is a subscription, and then that allows us to like listen for whenever new things we're subscribing to that data. So how they recommend uh, doing this is subscribing on component will mount. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this guy into a class component. So I'm gonna move this down here and I'm gonna say class. And this is going to extend react.component. And we'll put this all the way down here. And we're gonna have two curly braces down there because we're gonna render and now this is going to be const and we can still destructure but we're just going to say this dot props or destructuring and then we're going to return right here and I'm going to say component will mount and then in this function here is where we're going to be doing our stuff our uh, subscribing and I think this is it's not auto formatting oh we shouldn't do an equal sign there there we go so that format all nicely so I know the syntax is right. So now in here I want to call this uh, props.data.subscribe to more. And then we want to just pass um, similar to what they're doing here. So we're going to copy that. And so our document is the subscription that we made in a GraphQL over here. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to say const um, new channel message subscription is equal to GQL and just paste that in there. So now that's our document. So new channel message and then variables. Our only variable here is we need a channel ID and we're getting that from our props already. If we notice down here, we're saying props.channel ID, so we're passing it in. So this.props.channel ID. Okay, so now in our update query, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take the previous value, which is an array. See how we're mapping? It's an array of messages and adding a message onto it. So I'm going to get rid of this. 
So here we don't have a data, so I'm gonna get rid of that. So we're gonna keep what was originally in the previous query, and then we're just gonna change what messages was. So this is an array, and we're gonna keep what the previous messages were. So we're gonna do prev.messages, and then at the very end, we're gonna add our message that we just created, which is called subscription data dot new channel message. All right, so now when we, we save this and we see it run, we're going to be getting an error. And I'll tell you why. So, hello, run, bam, we get this cannot read property of user undefined, which I'm very surprised by. So we get this error, and the reason why we're getting this error is because in our front end, we are asking for a user. So we need to have the user in this object, but our message here doesn't have a user, right? Because we just create a message, there is no user. So when I call new channel message and I'm passing the data values, it has no user. But it should fetch the user for us because we have this messages message thing right here, right? So it resolves the user field for all messages. So when I call pubsub.publish, you would think it should go in there and and this method is indeed called, which is the oddest part, it just does not work. And I'm not actually sure quite why that is. But there's a little workaround we can do to make this work still. So, and how I figured this out was I just got rid of this user, right? And so if I don't subscribe to the user, I'm gonna get an error, but it still pops up here. So, hi too. Okay, we just get a whole different error because we don't have a user. Um, okay, forget that. We we need to subs we need to grab user dot username. Um, I thought we would be able to grab it. Okay, but we are not. Okay, so what I did to test this uh, theory basically is in here now. If this is the parent object, so I'm going to check if there's already a user object. So if there's a user, I just return a user. Otherwise, I return a promise. And this is the promises to fetch this. And there we go. So now what will happen is if I pass in, so I'm just gonna hard code this right now and then we're gonna go in and actually fix this. So I'm gonna pass in a user and my username is gonna be Bob. Bob13 we'll say. So we hard coded Bob, so that's not good, but we should see if this actually does work. High three, notice how my high three pops up nicely. So this is real time data now, as I'm typing, we see it. But we hard coded this Bob 13 value, that doesn't feel good. Let's fix that. So I don't know why, but it whenever it tries to actually do this fetch, like. I'm just gonna console.log to show you guys this. I am here. Like this function gets called when we pub sub for whatever reason. So we reconnected. So okay, here's the console. This is pretty small font, so I don't know if you can see this. But I'm just gonna say hi four. Notice how I am here. This function gets called. But if I get rid of this, this crashes. Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't like let this promise resolve or something, and so it's getting undefined on the client. I'm not really sure. So if you guys know what's up with that, I'd love to know. But we're basically now what we're gonna have to do is call this ourselves. <laughs> so instead of hard coding our user Bob here, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna create. So it would suck, right, to be having to do so. Const user is gonna be await models.user.find1 and we can say where right and we're looking for where the ID is equal to um, user.id so the current user basically so we're fetching the user while we're creating this user right here oh, okay we have a user so we'll say should I say username no we'll say user I don't know what to call this. Uh, current user, we'll say. So current user, and I'm just going to 
say user is equal to current user dot data values. Okay, I, I believe that will work. Let's see if it does. So high five, bam, works, and we see Bob 17 there. So that works, but this feels kind of bad, right? And if you're paying attention closely, you'll notice there's an await and await. So we're having to wait for us to fetch this current user before we're hitting this publish and returning, which might be okay um, if we don't care about um, returning this true right away. But we could put this in an asynchronous function. So I could just say const async func, and I could call this async. And basically all it's gonna do is it's gonna do these two things and then we can call our async func here. So basically, uh, the reason to do this instead of what I had before is it doesn't hang and wait for us to fetch the user, it returns. And then whenever we're finished fetching the user, we then publish. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure this will work, but I believe it will. So let's see, high six. And sure enough, it does work, we see high six. So now we're not uh, waiting for this to finish. This bit will run async asynchronously. Okay, so that was pretty cool what we established. So let's show you guys now side by side. So let's full screen this and let's open up another tab. And what we can do now is we should be able to see people talking back and forth. So I don't know who is invited to this team. I don't even know who the team person, leader of this team is, they're the owner. So if I'm just gonna come over here. Um, maybe it's Bob 15, maybe it was Bob 16. Let's just log in and see. And let's view team. All right, looks like we're part of cool team. We can see high six. So, hey, I'm Bob 15. So we see Bob 15 pop up over there. Funny enough, it doesn't pop up over here. I wonder if we're getting it in, are we getting an error? Okay, we are getting an error. That's kind of interesting. So encountered two keys with the same, encountered two children with the same key, so team 13. Um, we'll, we'll worry about this warning in a little bit. I'm also not sure why it didn't pop up over here. It popped up here. Maybe it popped up at the top? No. Um, I'm gonna just try refreshing. Yep, we see it here. So whatever, for whatever reason, this guy did not subscribe, but this guy subscribed. So now I'm gonna say, hey, I'm Bob17. And it pops up both places here. Hey again. Okay, now we seem to be listening on this end. For whatever reason, the subscription didn't look like it got started. So, um, as we're typing stuff now, we see it pop up on both screens like a real chat application. So we can chat back back and forth. Now I don't know what this warning is about. We'll have to we'll fix this in a future video. But that's it for this video guys. We finally have real time subscriptions working and now we're subscribing to uh, specific channels. So now that we switched on, over to here, theoretically, let's see if it actually does work. Um, if I type this, we shouldn't see it over here, and we do, so something's messed up with our filtering. Um, actually, I think we're actually, since we subscribed to this general, um, we didn't unsubscribe, so that could be a problem. So we'll have to fix that, but let's see if I type in this one. So this guy hasn't been to this channel yet, I don't think. So hello. Okay, so we didn't get it here, and we didn't get it here. Interesting. All right, so we have some bugs with this. We'll fix this in the next video. Um, that's it for this, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to be pushing this code up on GitHub.